This is uh, lecture 17 called Quotient Groups or Factor Groups and it's part of a pure mathematics course on finite group theory at junior and senior level and the first author is Barnard and here's the text that they've been using throughout this course or lecture sets. It's in the Teach Yourself series and the title of the book is Mathematical Groups. If you want to know more about the text and the course go to this website, prof, which is short for professor, Hugo de Garris, that's my name, dot wordpress dot com. Okay? And then click, click on the tab uh, de Garris MPC uh, M stands for math, P for physics, and C for computing. And my intention is over the next uh, few decades, if I, if I can live long enough, to uh, camcord uh, hundreds, many hundreds of courses so that uh, people who want to get a PhD level education in uh, mathematics and physics, and to some extent computer theory, uh, can do that for free. That's 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 the grand goal of all these lectures that that, that I give. All right. Well, um, today is on uh, quotient groups, and uh, in my view, um, this lecture is the highlight of the whole course. It's uh, you know, the the big one, and the reason for that is uh, we will be developing tools in. In this lecture, this chapter, you know, one lesson, one chapter, uh, one lecture, one lecture, one chapter of the book, and the tools we will uh, develop in this this uh, this lecture will enable us to uh, analyze the structure of a group. Um, we 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 will learn how to take a group and extract from it under certain circumstances, which and I've been saying this several times in the past. That uh, uh, this lecture, uh, we actually get to learn what those circumstances are. So you can extract a smaller group from from the bigger one, um, if, if if it's at all possible. Uh, if the group has uh, order, you know, prime number, can't do it. But uh, you know, if possible, uh, then there are techniques to extract a smaller group, and these smaller groups are called uh, quotient groups, like the result of a division. So in a sense, you're dividing uh, a group by another group, in, in a manner of speaking. So now, it, it's just an analogy. Now, you go back uh, quite a few lectures, we talked about product groups. Right? So this is just an arbitrary uh, element of group one. This is an arbitrary element of uh, group two. Then uh, you can define a product uh, of these two groups that generate a much larger group. So if this is order M and this is order N, uh, this product group will have order size M times N. Okay? And it's defined this way. So it's just a, it's a, it becomes, the, this is an ordered, s a set, set of ordered pairs, uh, of all, all possible ordered pairs where the first uh, element here comes from G1, the second element here in the ordered pair comes from G2. Okay, So uh, it's possible to make bigger groups by, in a manner of speaking, multiplying them. And you have to def define what that means. You have to give it a meaning. And here's, here's how you define it. All right. Now, what about the other way? Uh, is, it, is it possible to uh, have uh, some kind of division? Can, like, can you take a group and divide it? By, by another group, and a and, yeah, question. And the answer is yes, uh, so long as this group that you're dividing by, um, in fact, yeah, it'll be some kind of subgroup of, of this, it, it has to have a certain property. And I'm still being deliberately vague because we're, we're leading up to it. And uh, this, this, uh, this lecture, I'll, you know, by the end of the lecture, you'll know what this special property is, or give it an actual label, and then you'll be... Uh, uh, much better informed. All right. Well, um, so this this notion of how to divide a group by by a smaller group. <coughs> uh, so we're leading into it now. Uh, you know, how, how did this notion 
how was it discovered? How did the pure mathematicians, you know, the researchers looking into this possibility, how, how did they come across this uh, possibility of uh, dividing one group uh, by, a, by a smaller one to get a smaller group than the one you started with? Well, here's, here's, here are some clues, some hints, right? So uh, start, start with your group, with a group uh, D3, you know, so it's the dihedral group of three uh, equilateral sides. In other words, you're talking about the, the symmetry operations of a triangle, equilateral triangle, D3. Right? Here's, here's its table. I've done a whole lecture on this. So if, uh, if three is the number of sides, the size of your group, D3, will be double that. Right? So if you have an N here, the size of your uh, group, D, N, will be 2N. Right? So there's three, so we have six elements in this <coughs> D3 group. And here's the table. You've seen this uh, several times before. And in the past, I've even divided it you know, into blocks like this uh, as, a, as a kind of uh, foretaste of what's coming. Well, today's when it arrives. Okay? So today we actually do quotient groups. Now, um, let, uh, let this subset of your group, uh, call it H, and it's actually, it, it's actually a subgroup, right? These, these three elements are a subgroup, and which group? Well, it's Z3, yeah, the, the set of the residue, uh, residue classes, you know, uh, square brackets 0, mod 3, square brackets 1, mod 3, square brackets 2, mod 3. You know, we've done that several times already. Okay, So this, this group here is uh, a subgroup. And uh, notice, if, if that's our subgroup H, what's this? Yeah, look at it, look at it. Can you see it's of the form BH? You know, B, A, A squared, B, B A B A squared. That is a coset. That's a critical word. <laughs> you probably see where I'm going already. This this is a cos a coset of this one of your of your uh, subgroup H. Okay. And uh, look at look at what you get. This, these these are like the uh, entries in the group table uh, under under this these coset uh, members of your group, you know, D3, right? And so this block here is sort of similar to this block here, uh, you know, except for order, but um, they're, they're pretty much the same. And here and here, these, these two are the same. And, and these, now, uh, this, this group, if you, if you um, get back a ways and look at the thing, uh, you'll probably just see like four blocks Right, rather than uh, 36 entries, you just, you just so this this um, this group here, it looks a bit like Z2 of, the, of this form, you know, uh, A B B A, right? A B B A. Now that's a much smaller group, right? It's just uh, of order two. In fact, uh, it's Z2. Now uh, there's only you can only have one kind of group of uh, order two because 2 is a prime number, right? So it's a cyclic group. So uh, that's, that's its form, that's its group table, right? And there's only one way it can be. So uh, in a sense, so uh, in a matter of speaking, and I'll make this more explicit as we go along, uh, in a sense, you're dividing this group D3 by uh, this subgroup H, which is Z3, this, this group here is Z3, right? And what you get is this, and that's Z2. So, so in, in a certain sense, um, like I say, I'll make that clear as we go along. In a sense, you're saying, take your original group, which is D3, divide it, uh, that's still uh, within quotes, right? by uh, Z3, so that, that's your subset, H, right? That's, that's your H, your subset. And the result that you get uh, is isomorphic to Z2. It's like this, right? You know, the isomorphism sign. Now, this group, this smaller group that you get by taking a larger group and dividing it 
by a smaller group, that uh, the result is a quotient. You know, quotient just means the result after a division. Right? So you can call this group a quotient group or, uh, or a factor group. Bo both terms are commonly used, so uh, be familiar with, with both. Quotient group, factor group, same thing. Okay. Right now, if if that's true, and it is, uh, you cannot uh, in uh, you cannot deduce that d3 is uh, equal to z3 times z2. That that doesn't necessarily follow. In this case, it does not follow. This is not isomorphic to that. In fact, uh, z3 times z2 you know, using um, using this uh, Cartesian product, uh, and since we're talking about groups. A Cartesian product is then relabeled into uh, what's, the, what's the word direct product. Right? If you hear the word direct product, you know you're talking about groups. If you hear the term uh, Cartesian product, that's more general. Uh, it's usually in the context of sets. Now, of course, a direct product is a Cartesian product, but a Cartesian product is not necessarily a direct product because it, uh, the, the sets you're talking about might not be groups. Right, okay. Now, uh, Z3 times Z2 is isomorphic to Z6, but uh, uh, earlier uh, we showed that D3 is... Oops. Uh, 